welcome back with another podcast episode. And today, you, firstly, you guys may be using the sentences or phrases in your day-to-day conversation, like simply the best or simply the great. But now, today in our podcast, we have the brand Simply the Great, which is an, a, a really good honey brand. And the person who is responsible for the brand is Mr. Shahro. Hi. So. I thank you for having me. Uh, you're welcome. How are you? I'm good, thank you. So, um, so can you first tell us like a bit about your journey of and how you started a honey business in the UAE? Well, I would love to say that uh, honey is my passion and I'm crazy about honeybees, but to be honest, I'm not. So uh, I, I, I do use honey and I've been using honey since I was a child, but it's not like something I was really passionate about or I wanted to work in. It's just uh, pure out of luck and by chance I got into this business. So, so, so you asked me how I got into this business, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, basically, uh, by profession, I'm an engineer. Oh, wow. So I help businesses perform better. So I was working on, uh, I've been working all over UAE on different projects like making big buildings and airports and uh, new motorways and highways. Wow. Uh, but uh, I got to a point in my life, I, got just, I just got bored and I wanted to do something different. Huh. So I was traveling through the mountains uh, in northern Pakistan in the Himalayas. And I found a, I found a beekeeper and, and I mean, uh, he was harvesting some really cool honey, some really rare honey uh, high up in the mountains. Uh, so yeah, so I spoke to him and I found out that uh, the beekeepers or the farmers in a society, they are really underprivileged. Uh, they, they work the hardest, but yeah. the return they get is something, I mean, they struggled in life. So I just wanted to, to I, and this is how this idea about Simply the Great came up, where, where we are connecting beekeepers to customers. Uh, also, guys, I just want thank you, Mr. Shahroz, for coming, because he came all the way from Omal Klein. Yeah. Thank you. It's a pleasure to be here, and I've, I've, I've been your... A subscriber and your viewer for such a long time is just uh, amazing to be here and and, and be, doing, be doing this podcast. Okay, so like, what are some challenges that you faced in the industry? Well, where do I begin? So um, when I met this beekeeper in the Himalayas about eight or ten years ago, roughly about nine years ago. Uh, so I came to know that they are really struggling with the business because uh, they work all year round with the honeybees, they travel, uh, uh, they are out in the field. Uh, but at the end of the day, uh, at the end of the season, what they get is uh, like their honey, they are unable to sell directly to the consumers. So what they do is they end, they end up uh, selling that honey to wholesalers and distributors so, uh, and they don't get paid enough. So I wanted, like, I wanted to, uh, to help them connect with customers and that's how this idea of Simply the Great Food uh, initiated by having an online store where customers can go directly and skip the middleman basically. Oh, okay. So how many types of, diff- like how many different types of honey do you produce and what are their unique characteristics? Oh, that's an interesting one. Mm-hmm. Well, um, you know, honey is produced by honeybees, and honeybees they grow mm-hmm. different flowers. Oh yeah. So uh, there are so many, like there are hundreds of varieties of honey in the mm. world. Yeah. And the difference is from the nectar source. So, for example, if if it's an uh, apple orchard, the uh, the honey produced during that season would be apple flower honey. So if you oh. take your bees into an, an orange grove, it would be orange blossom honey. So it depends from flowers to flower. In UAE, we have, we've got cedar trees. You might have seen them yeah. across Hatta and Fujaira, the coastal areas. So um, on the trees, uh, they, they blossom, the flowers blossom once a year uh, during September and October. And that's when our bees, they go over there and they, they take the nectar, the juice from the flowers, they bring it back to the hives and they make honey. Ah, because each flower has like a difference. Yes, and you know, uh, all the, f- well, m- most of the fruits, they come from flowers, right? Oh. So whatever fruit you see, uh, it comes from a flower and that flower holds nectar. The nectar is basically the juice of the flower. Uh-huh. 
So uh, once the flower blooms, honeybees, they go to the flower, they pick up the nectar, the juice, and they bring it back to the hives. And uh, that's how honey is made. Oh, wow. Okay. So most people think that uh, honey should be of a specific color. It should be of a specific taste, like you see in the supermarkets. Uh -huh. But that's not the case. Each honey is different. It could be any color you can imagine. I've actually seen honey, which is dark black in color. Really? Yeah, I've actually bought it for you here as well. Let me show it to you. So this is the black forest honey. Oh, wow. So this is from the juniper trees. Oh, wow. Let me open this for you. Have you got a spoon here? Uh, no. So, so that's basically like a, a really dark colored honey. Oh, wow. And that's come from, the, uh, from an area where we've got uh, juniper trees. Oh, they're all like different. Complete contrast to that, we've got white honey. Oh, yeah. So if you think about honey, you think it should be liquid, right? I mean, yeah. Well, it's not. It's like a thick paste. Really? Yeah. Wait, that is a thick paste. Yeah, it's like a, a, a cream or something. Oh, white mountain honey. Yeah. So, you know, honey, they come in all colors. They come in all consistency. Uh, this is the acacia honey, which is a typical golden Ooh, honey. Oh, yeah. It's so, like the common colors, yeah, sort of, yeah. yeah. But they all taste, like, very different. Yeah. And the difference is due to the flowers. Yeah. Different flowers make the different sort of taste and yeah. look. So can you explain the differences between raw honey and regular honey? That's a great question. And, <laughs> you know, the reason... Uh, I'm so excited to, 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 to explain you about this is because oh, okay. in the supermarket you, you see yeah. same kind of honey everywhere. Yeah. yeah? But uh, if you speak to any beekeeper, they will tell you about the origin of the honey, the flowers in the area, the type of water, the oh. pesticides. They'll, they'll talk about a lot of different things and oh. their honey would be different. Like uh, uh, if, you, if, you, if, you, if, you, if you're in high up in the mountains, uh, depending on the flowers, so like, for example, uh, uh, we've got this. Uh, we've got this apple honey from an apple orchard, so it's got different taste, different color. If you, if you go to an orange orchard, it's got a different type of uh, consistency, different colors. So uh, the one in the supermarket is basically a blend of different honey. They blend it all together and they heat it. Wait, so they blend like all the types of it? Most of the cheap types. Oh, wait, that's how they make it. Yes. Unfortunately, processed honey is uh, honey which is blend of different types of honey. They mix it all up together. They don't care about the quality, the origin. Yeah. They just mix it up, they heat it up, and what you get at the end of the process is uh, a, cons like, uh, <laughs> like, like a normal, like, like a consistent color, consistent taste. And, yeah. and you know, due to the heat involved in the processing, it kills all the good stuff. Really? Yeah. Oh, no. And, and let me talk, uh, 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 let's talk about what makes honey raw, right? So, so processed honey is honey which has been heated and filtered to a very high yeah. temperature. And in complete contrast to that is raw honey. So raw honey is basically uh, which is uh, unprocessed, unfiltered and unheated. And why raw honey is better for you is because it contains all the good stuff. It contains the minerals and the vitamins and the royal jelly and the pollens. Yeah, because sometimes when I'm not well, I just, um, my dad gives me honey and then I feel like my throat, sometimes it's good for, yeah, hun different honey is good for like different things, right? That's true because, uh, you know, the type of flower or the type of fruit, it oh. influences the, the behavior of the honey, right? Yeah. So, so you, 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 might have, you might have heard uh, saying, apple a day keeps a doctor away. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's because apple is rich in iron. Oh, yeah. So similarly, if you take apple blossom honey, uh, this particular honey is extra rich in iron. Oh, wow. And, and, and similarly, like uh, oranges, you might have heard uh, the rich in vitamin C. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So similarly, orange blossom honey is rich in vitamin C as well. Oh. So uh, different types of honey, they, are, they contain different kinds of minerals and vitamins. Yeah, because every flower is different. Exactly. So, like, what are some rare or unique types of honey do you, you like that you offer? 
Oof. I think every honey is rare. Every honey is unique in its own. Uh, what? Um, well, if you ask about my personal favorite, that has to be white mountain honey. Really? The one over here. Yeah. Uh... And the, the reason is because it's so easy to spread. It's like a thick paste. It's just so easy to spread. And in terms of taste, it's probably the mildest of all honey. It's not too sweet. Really? Yeah. Oh, wow. So uh, once I got to meet, uh, so that's how the business started. I met one beekeeper. I found out about the struggles. Uh, I just wanted to help them really. And that's how this, this business started. And the more I got into it, I got to explore about different varieties of honey, different types and different benefits. So, so it's been a learning curve for me personally yeah. as well. It's not something I was born with or it's not, it's not like my family business. Uh, so it wasn't like sort of your passion at the start, but then when you met someone yeah. and saw it, then it... Yeah. Oh, wow. And I'm quite lucky because it, it, it is quite quite a profitable business as well. Mm -hmm. So you know what they say, if you love what you do, you, you won't have yeah. to work a single day of your life. So that's true for me. Oh, wow. So if someone came to you saying that they had a cough, hmm. what, what honey would you recommend? Well, to be honest, it's not like a medicine, right? Like you take a tablespoon yeah, and you feel better instantly. It's not like that. So basically, you have to you have to uh, dwell upon the reason why why you've got a cough. It's maybe the air outside is not good, oh, yeah. or the temperature is changing, or you, you, you or or maybe you, maybe you're struggling with the immunity. So um. I think you have to you have to have a holistic approach to your lifestyle. You have to live a healthy lifestyle altogether. You have to make sure that you eat healthy, you exercise regularly. Because if you just like do like other things, like eat like junk and like do other things that are not good, yeah. and then just eat honey, yeah, like so even medicine, it wouldn't help. Like, it instantly. wouldn't help you. The benefits of the honey would uh, wouldn't be as great as the damage you've done. Oh uh, yeah. So I, I would suggest everyone to, <laughs> to live a healthy lifestyle, uh, walk about minimum 10,000 steps a day, avoid junk food as much as you can. And on top of that, you should be having superfoods like fresh fruits, honey. Yeah. And that's going to help you towards living a healthy lifestyle. Oh, wow. So I'm, I'm not like one of those people who say, oh, all right, this honey is for calf, this honey is for, I don't know what, but <laughs> it, it's not like that. Oh, that's very interesting, guys. So how does the, um, can honey help with allergies and how does it work? Yes, it does actually. Yeah. Really? And, and you'd be surprised to know uh, that in hospitals, um, and this is not related to allergies, but in hospitals they do uh, honey, um, honey dressing. What? And you know what that is? Yeah, you put like the honey. On your, on your wounds yeah, yeah. and it, the gets, it helps to things. heal the wounds, you know. And the reason for that is because honey is antibacterial and antifungal so it doesn't allow the growth of bacteria or fungus and it's got some really good enzymes so as long as the honey is raw it's got good enzymes that helps helps to uh, interact with the good bacteria in, on your skin and 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 uh, speed up the healing process uh, so like if you put like a honey with like a salad or something then it would work well because yeah. it's also healthy yeah but if you put it with like a Kit Kat or something, like a sweet treat, it wouldn't really work. Wouldn't really work, yeah. Yeah. And you know, naturally honey is antibacterial, it's antifungal, it's anti-inflammatory. What it does is like, you know, the, the inflammation in your throat or in your stomach or whatever, honey, honey helps to soothe it down. So, oh. Ah, so like it can like soothe your throat but not like fully heal it. Yeah. So something like that. So are there like any benefits to using honey on your skin, like as skin? Oh, absolutely, yeah. Because Ooh. you know, honey is really good uh, as a moisturizer. Really? Yeah, it helps to moisturize your skin. It helps to remove all the uh, bad bacteria because it's antibacterial, right? So it kills off the bad bacteria. Oh, wow, yeah. I actually never knew that. Because our, our skin is exposed to uh, the external elements like heat, uh, dust, you know, free, uh, the free radicals. So uh, what honey does is it, it helps repair the damage. Uh, I 
actually never knew you could use honey on your skin. I thought it was for like, eating. No, I mean, uh, yes, you can. You can do the honey masking. And, really? you, you, and the next day you're going to wake up with a, with a shiny glow on your face. <laughs> <laughs> Many people actually do it. <laughs> I've never tried it personally. Yeah. Well, like, what's the best way to use honey for maximal health benefits? Oh, well, well, uh, when I was a kid, I used to have uh, honey once in a while, like a tablespoon a day. Oh, yeah. But then I used to eat a lot of sugars. I used to have a lot of candies and, mm. and you know. Uh, but uh, uh, I think the best way to use honey is to replace all your processed sugars with honey. To be honest, because we do need sweetness, we we do crave li- yeah. that 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 sweet tooth every now and then. So instead of uh, like uh, having a bar of chocolate, it's you rather have like a tablespoon of honey, or you can mix it with. You, you can create so many uh, delicious uh, recipes out of honey. Yeah, sometimes I eat pancakes with honey. Yeah, yeah. So so that's like the good sugars, right? Yeah. Because uh, white sugar, without being t- uh, too too technical about this. White sugar is sucrose, so that's the bad stuff. That's what causes diabetes. Oh. So honey contains sugar as well, but it's the good sugars like glucose and fructo- fructose and maltose and dextrose. So honey is sweet, yes, but it, the kind of sugar is not as harmful as white processed sugar. So it's kind of like healthy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's like it's like interesting to think honey is like. It's like kind of healthy because it's like so good. Mm-hmm. Like I can sometimes barely believe that it's like nearly healthy, like kind of healthy. So can honey be consumed by diabetic people or patients who are suffering from sugar? Well, I'm not qualified to give a medical advice, uh, okay. but uh, through my experience and through reading lots of medical journals online yeah. and talking to diabetic people and diabetic doctors, Mm-hmm. Not diabetic doctors, people who, who diagnose diabetics. Yeah. So uh, basically, uh, the, the main uh, issue is that uh, for, for diabetics, it's not the spike in your uh, sugar levels that's dangerous. It's the low sugar that's more dangerous for diabetics. Oh. Because once your sugar goes down, your brain goes may go into a state of coma. So, so th- that's, uh, that's much more harmful than having a high sugar high blood sugar level. So what they normally do is, diabetic people, they keep like some toffee or a sugar candy with, in their pocket. So in case the sugar goes down, they can just use it. So rather than using processed sugars, it's much more healthier for them to use honey as an alternate uh, for... Sort of like a sugar. Yeah. Alternate sugar. Yeah. So, so that's one thing. So if your sugar goes down, for, for diabetic people, if your sugar goes down, have, have a small tablespoon of honey. And secondly, uh, we all need sugar, our brain needs sugar to perform, right? Mm-hmm. So without, so sugar is the main fuel for our body. So we need sugar, no, ma- no matter how diabetic you get, you, de- you do need sugar to perform your daily activities. For that sugar, it should come through natural sources rather than the artificial or processed sources. Yeah, because some people think that if they, like, if they think sugar is like, they think sugar is really bad for them, so then they stop eating it altogether. Yeah, that's not right. Yeah. Because sugar is everywhere. So if you're nibbling on an apple, it's sweet, right? Mm-hmm. So it, that means it contains sugar. Oh. But, but it's the healthy sugar that matters. Uh, like honey has a healthy yeah. sugar. So the sugar we find in the supermarket or the one in the chocolates or cakes is basically um, sort of bad sugar? So it's bad sugar because it comes from, the most of the sugar comes from sugar cane juice, right? The sugar cane juice is then heated and processed and it's added with lots of chemicals sugar. and, you know, so that's, the, that's really unhealthy. Oh. So how do you ensure the quality and purity of your honey? So this is one thing that I've worked really hard on from day one. Uh, we, need to be, we need to make sure that we are working with the right kind of people. So first of all, we've got a set list of criteria uh, for people to join us, for the beekeepers to join us. And for that, we train them, uh, we, 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 we give them the tools and the equipment and the beekeeping suits and the beehives and everything. So we, we actually train them for, for quite a long time for them to be able to harvest the high quality. 
So once they reach a certain standard, they join us. They join us company. They join our company, and they start working with us. So that's the first first stage of uh, scrutiny, I would say. The second is we've got labs. We've got in-house labs where each honey that is uh, harvested from the hive goes back to the it goes back to our lab and gets tested for all the yeah, bad stuff, sure. yeah. which is mostly like sucrose or the HMF levels and the pollen analysis, all the. So we make sure that the honey is top top notch, top quality. It's good. Yeah, and then the third layer I would say is by the uh, municipality, the the. the the government here, the local government. So what they do is every now and then, the, the lab food inspectors they walk into a, they walk into a factory, into a warehouse. They take some samples, some random samples. They won't tell us what they're taking, and they just take it into the labs and they share with us the lab reports. Oh, yeah. So we've got ultimately, I mean, as a consumer, uh, we have to understand that, uh, you know, there are so many fake. Uh, fake tests about uh, checking the purity of honey online. So oh. it's so like you drop into the water or you burn it, or, and that's all crap. That's not actual. That that's not true. So the only authentic method, I would say, is through lab testing. Oh, so some of them are like fake honey testing. Yeah. So you can't test. Oh. You can't test honey at home because you know honey comes in all like like you can see. I mean, there are so many different colors, varieties, mm -hmm. textures. So you can't have one standard for all. So what factors affect the flavor and quality of honey? Well, uh, I believe honey should be raw. It should, be, it sh it should not be processed. Yeah. So as long as your honey is raw, it contains 22 different kinds of amino acids, uh, vitamins, minerals, uh, and that's what makes honey a superfood. It's not the sweetness of the honey that's good for you. It's actually the, the minerals and the vitamins and the active enzymes. Honey is actually really good. Yeah. So if, if you uh, look down honey uh, under, uh, under a microscope, you can see uh, live enzymes. They are actually like moving about. Mm -hmm. So it's very much like a live, uh, uh, it's, it's, it's full of life, basically. Oh, wow. Yeah. But if you compare this with uh, a processed honey, processed honey is, there is nothing in there. Yeah. It's dead. <laughs> it's just sugars. That's all it is. It's just like sugar. It's yeah. like... So, do you use any special techniques in your honey production? Any special techniques, as in, um, yeah, we cold press our honey. We don't eat it. That's all we do. <laughs> so basically, you know, honey is made by the honeybees. So mm -hmm. it's not something that we prepare in a factory. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. all the hard work is done by the honeybees. Yeah. They do all the hard work, and we collect all the money. <laughs> <laughs> So, th so there's not a lot of effort that we put into. Oh, yeah. How do you take care of the bees and ensure their health? Oh, that's a good question. <laughs> you know, uh, the bee population globally is in a sharp state of decline. Really? Yeah. And I don't know if, if, if it was Einstein who once said it, but someone someone said it that if if bees uh, were to disappear from earth the hum the human race would be gone in 3 years time and i think that makes sense because uh, bees uh, the honey bees they play a, such a crucial role in cross pollination so do you, do you know about cross pollination i'm not real so what happens is right so all the crops and the fruits and the flowers uh, they, they contain po they contain uh, they, I mean, uh, they have to cross pollinate. Like the pollens, they mix and match together. So there's a male and a female, and they come together and they produce uh -huh. more flowers. So, oh, yeah. and this activity it happens uh, through bees mostly. Yeah. So bees they go sit on different flowers and they take the pollens with them. Mm -hmm. So the pollen from one flower will go will will, will go into a pollen of a different yeah. flower through the bee, and so that's how the life cycle of a flower develops, yeah. right? So that's how we get the fruits and the crops and everything. So if there's no bees, so the the cross pollination or the migration of pollen from one flower from one field to a different field it just stops. Because flowers and trees give you the oxygen. Exactly. 
So flour and cheese are actually good for the humans as yeah, well. Yeah, so if, if we've got like no fruits, we've got no crops, we won't be able to, we won't be able to eat and we just yeah. disappear. There, there would be a massive food crisis, to be honest. And you know, uh, there are some areas we are working with uh, local beekeepers. So what they do is, uh, and that's in, um, especially in America, there's, there's a whole documentary about it. Uh, people invite beekeepers to their almond farms. Oh. So what they do is, so during, uh, so during the blooming season of almond flowers, mm -hmm. so they're like small white flowers on the almond trees. So oh. beekeepers, they take the bees and due to cross-pollination, they get more flowers and then they get more almonds. Oh, <laughs> and then more almonds are there. Yeah, so if they don't take the bees, they won't have, uh, yeah. they won't have enough almonds to feed <laughs> us. And that happens with most of the fruits as well. So we are working yeah. with... Oh. So we were actually working at, we, we, we were working at an orange grove and the guy, the guy who owns the farm, he, he came to us, he said, take away your bees, they're gonna sting us and then blah, blah, blah. So we told him, no, just wait. At the end of six weeks, you're gonna have more fruits. And that's actually true, that's exactly what happened. Ah, uh, yeah, because like people don't take, sometimes don't take the bees like outside of like a place because they're scared of the stinging. Yes. Yeah. And you know what? Uh, uh, once a bee stings you, it dies. Did you know that? Yeah. So, bee won't sting you unless and until she feels uh, absolutely really threatened. Really insecure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because then they know that they're gonna die yeah. because they can't survive yeah. without their sting. Yeah. So, how, like, how do you educate your customers about choosing the right type of honey? Well, first of all, if you like, uh, if you had a chance to go through our website, we we mention clearly about the origin, the flowers, where it's come from, the beekeepers involved, the area. So it's it's more about consumers making an informed decision about what they're buying, and what are the actual properties of that particular honey. So it's not like you just walk into a store and just buy yeah. anything. So the customers actually, uh, they make an informed decision and that's what we take the pride in. Oh, oh, I understand. So why do you think people are turning, like turning to honey as a natural sweet? It's just about um, people getting more awareness about the superfoods. And especially after COVID, we've seen this sort of, um, well, people have realized that health is the most important, uh, uh, most important, uh, people have realized the importance of health in their life, right? So, uh, as a consequence, people are moving towards, uh, they're making healthier choices, they're eating healthy, they are, um, they're exercising more. So that drives the sales yeah. of our honey as well. Oh, wow. So in, the bra in your brand, Simply the Great, do you sell any other things? Yes, we, so we started off with honey back in yeah. 2015. It's so almost nine years now. I can't believe it's been such a long time. I was born in 2015. Really? Yeah. <laughs> so when you were born, we started this business. <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, at the moment we are doing lots of different things. We are doing like saffron from Iran. Oh. Saffron is like one of the most uh, potent superfoods. Uh, it helps with, uh, it's got, it, well, it helps with anti-inflammation. It, it's really helpful for the digestive issues. It's really good for arthritis. So that's something we're doing. We're also making desi ghee. It's, desi ghee? Yeah, it's like a form of clarified butter. Oh. Yeah. And we're also doing uh, some, some, some cold pressed oils like almond oil, black seed oil, oh. yeah, castor oil, just the super super foods that we're into oh wow so what's the like do you have any exciting like new products or plans for the future hmm i don't know really it's just um uh, i don't know to be honest it's it's not something we've like i said this business is not something that i planned it's just ah uh, yeah it's just through just came yeah it just came by and it just got me involved in it 
So at the moment, uh, we want. Uh, we are working with lots of new beekeepers, so you would be seeing a lot, lots of new different kinds of honey on our website very soon. Um, yeah, because every beekeeper will have like their own idea or honey. Yeah. yeah. So uh, next month we are getting uh, a fresh batch of manuka honey from New Zealand. Oh, I think I, there's, we have, my dad has manuka honey. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So manuka again is a, like a special kind of flower that only that's only found in New Zealand, nowhere else in the world. Really? Yeah. Oh my gosh. So finally, if someone wanted to approach, wants to approach you to buy, how can they approach you? It's quite simple, really. You just have to go onto our website, that is simplythegreat.ae, and just place your order over there. And we, we deliver all across UAE within 24 hours. Really? Yeah. Oh, wow. So, thank you for being in the podcast. Thank you for having me. It's been <laughs> lovely talking to you. And uh, it's been amazing. I mean, I just can't believe that uh, you've got uh, such a high interest in honey. Yeah, I like honey. It's and so not good. many people know about like different kinds of honey. People just generally think that honey is honey. I've learned a lot about honey in this podcast. So, I really enjoyed. So, everyone, please like and subscribe. Bye.